Hello, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in to Hensel Phelps uh, webinar today. My name is Brad Lewis. I'm the Corporate Director of Supplier Diversity with Hensel Phelps. I've been with Hensel Phelps for just over 21 years, and um, I'm not quite used to engaging uh, our small business community or our trade partner community in general from a virtual standpoint. So this is a little bit new for me, uh, but I'm excited nonetheless. So let me cover a couple of housekeeping things uh, just so you guys know this webinar is being recorded, um, so it will be available um, throughout the presentation. You'll see uh, information that you might want to try and jot down. Uh, please don't worry about that. We'll get you a copy of the presentation. Um, so just focus in another uh, item. I want to make sure you guys are aware of. There's a question box on your right hand side. Uh, so if any time throughout the, the presentation you guys have questions, feel free to uh, input those questions there um, and we'll we'll uh, answer those at the end of the uh, presentation. Also, we welcome any comments. If there's anything you see uh, or want us to elaborate on or we can do better next time, feel free to share. We appreciate it. So during this particular time of uh, the pandemic, uh, there were quite a few inquiries sent our way, uh, not only me directly, uh, but the rest of my team as well. Um, and they they were centered around opportunities with Hensel Phelps. Uh, they were centered around uh, you know, federal opportunities, how to pursue them, uh, as far as the federal government having set aside and things of that nature, um, and just basic interaction with Hensel Phelps. So uh, we wanted to provide that information for you. So before we get started, I wanted to introduce Hensel Phelps for those who are unfamiliar. Hensel Phelps was started by a gentleman named Abel Hensel Phelps in 1937. Uh, that office was open in Greeley, Colorado, which is actually where our corporate office is today. Now we have nine offices across the United States, in addition to the office in Greeley, Colorado. We have the Mid-Atlantic District Office, which is where, I'm, where I am right now, and David Fisher is here as well. Uh, we have an office in Orlando, Florida, a Southeast District Office. Uh, we have an office in Texas, in Austin. We have an office in uh, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. That's our Western office. We also have an office in Denver. We call that our Plains District Office. We have two offices in California, Northern California, Southern California, uh, we have an office in Hawaii as well, that's the Pacific office, and an office in the Pacific Northwest, which is in Seattle, Washington. Next slide. So here's our agenda. Here's the things we'll cover. Uh, dove in, gave you a little insight into Hensel Phelps, but we're going to do it. We're going to do a little bit deeper dive into our website, how to navigate it, um, and how to get into building connected which is what we use for our estimating software and issuing out bid opportunities. So we want to make sure you're familiar with that, how to get your business in there and be notified when we have bidding opportunities in the markets you're interested. We're also going to talk about the federal websites, the resources associated with it. Um, Hensel Phelps does a lot of work with the federal government, so there's a lot of compliance requirements that we have um, and information we want to share to make sure you're ready for those opportunities uh, within the federal government and just the importance of being certified. Um, we'll also talk about this platform here, virtual engagement, how we're going to continue to do that because we have to continue engaging with the small business community and the trade partner com community in general just to make sure we have personnel and, and businesses to do work with. Um, the other added piece to that is matchmaking. We're going to make sure that we have a platform to introduce our small business trade partners to our large business trade partners. And why that's important, uh, the small businesses that we work with today, those will be the large businesses we partner with tomorrow. So we're, we want to build those relationships now. We want to help you grow and be successful on all of our projects. So how will we do that? We're going to talk a little bit about our, our engagement methods. Next slide, please. So our commitment really starts from the ground up. Um, it starts with the entry level personnel on our job sites that you work with. It starts with all the programs that we have in place to make sure small businesses are successful in our jobs and they get opportunities. And we, we come with some out of the box thinking in our approach. And the reason we're able to do that is because a lot of that comes from the top down. 
Uh, I spend a lot of time talking to our CEO, our chief estimators, uh, the leaders of all of our districts, um, and I share those programs and make sure that the teams are executing on a daily basis. So uh, our programs have been successful, and here's a little example of the awards that we've received over the years. These are national awards. Um, the Dwight D. Eisenhower Award is issued by the Small Business Administration. As you can see, we've won that three times in a row. Uh, we've actually won it every time we've applied for it, so I'm pretty proud of that award. Uh, but I'm also proud of the ABC awards that we've won. Uh, those awards are you know, decided by our peers, and so those are very important to us. Uh, we've, we've won it seven times as it's shown, but we won it three times in a row, and then we didn't apply uh, because we were told we need to allow some other folks to apply for it, and then we were able to apply four more times, and we won it four times in a row. So very excited, and that just speaks to the commitment of our teams, uh, the commitment of the supply diversity professionals associated with Hensel Phelps. Um, the other award I wanted to highlight is the Freedom Award. Um, that's a very prestigious award, um, and it kind of highlights our commitment to veterans and supporting them uh, as they transition to Hensel Phelps, working with within our ranks, and also when they go back and, and serve our country, we continue to support them throughout that. So uh, very prestigious, prestigious award and very proud of it. So let me introduce you to our team. Today you've heard from me, of course, but you'll also hear from Mr. James Harper. He represents our Southeast District Office. He's currently stationed in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, helping out with those projects that we're uh, implementing right now. Mr. David Fisher, you'll hear from later as well. He's right here beside me in the Mid-Atlantic District. You'll also hear from Rosemary Middleton. She's in our Western District uh, and also Michelle Kaiser. She's our manager of supply diversity in our Southern California district, currently working on our LAX projects. So without further ado, here comes Michelle Kaiser to talk about becoming a trade partner with Hensel Phelps. Hi everyone. Yes, my name is Michelle Kaiser reporting to you live from our conference room in Irvine in Southern California. It's 72 and sunny today and I'm excited to tell you about Building Connected. That's the system that we use for our bids, how to set up a profile if you don't already have one. I'm going to tell you about some opportunities that we have, projects that we're currently working on and upcoming pursuits. And I'm also going to share contacts with you so you know who to talk to when you are interested in one of those opportunities. So let's get started with Building Connected. So the easiest way to access it and to create your profile is to go on HenselPhelps.com. HenselPhelps.com, that's all you gotta remember, all the information's there. You'll go to the About on the top right, and then you'll click on Trade Partners on the bottom left. This is the landing page for our trade partners. You'll see our corporate commitment for equal opportunity employment and um, subcontractor work. It'll talk about the different steps. You'll select a district, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to go to SoCal um, shortly, but I wanted to show you this map because it does show the different regions, the different markets that Brad talked about. We'll go into Southern California. That's my home. That's the example we'll use today. You'll see the district office contact information for the estimators, and there's a link for opportunities. So this is a great place to get a glimpse into some of the things that we're working on, buyout packages that are out. It doesn't necessarily show the upcoming pursuits, so stay in touch with your manager of supplier diversity and your estimators. Next, we'll go to pre-qualifications. I'll show you the form, um, the kind of steps to go from HenselPhelps.com trade partners to Building Connected. You'll click on the pre-qualifications link, and that'll take you to the next page where you'll put in your email address. This is the first step to creating your account. If you already have one, it'll show up when you put in your company name. You'll click through and you'll put in the information that's missing. If you're not already on the system, it'll take you to the initial information. So remember, the more information you put on here, the easier it is for us to find you. If you are a demo subcontractor that also does abatement, put it on there. It'll be easier for us to find you, get you more work. We'll have a better understanding of the scope that you perform. Um, and this this will take you into the an email verification for Building Connected. Then you'll have access to your profile. On your profile, you'll see invitations to bid there. 
but the best way to make sure you're getting invited is to make sure your information is correct on our application. Like I said, the more information you put there, the easier it is to find you. So you'll put on here any certifications that you have, labor type. In California, for example, we're signatory to the laborers, carpenters, and cement masons, except in uh, San Diego. So you want to put that information so we can find you. And you'll put in their safety. Safety is important for us, so EMR and bonding capacity for financials as well. One thing to remember is that this information is specific to Southern California. You'll see that this this is SoCal district application. So if you work in multiple markets, you'll want to go back to the HenselPhelps.com trade partners, click into the map zone that applies to your market, and you'll just apply however many times you need to so that we can have a filtered database per district. Now I'm going to share with you probably something you're most excited about is the opportunities. What is out there? What are we pursuing? So I'm going to go slide by slide. Each district has its own slide. There's enough projects in each district to take up a slide. So we'll get started with the Southeast opportunities. So the first one there is uh, Nashville Airport. That's where James Harper is. You'll hear from him today. He's your manager of supplier diversity in the Southeast district. Upcoming pursuits there are Maytalk in Alabama and the Hurricane Michael uh, rebuild zones in Florida. At Mado, Mid-Atlantic, you've got David Fisher and Brad Lewis as your resources, uh, as well as the estimators listed on the slides. Um, and you have current projects, some education projects, Prince George County, upcoming stuff is um, includes a commu communication center in Maryland. The Pacific Northwest, we're um, looking at a lot of education projects, projects for the University of Washington, as well as the Bellevue School District. In Plains, we are building a hotel for the Salt Lake City Convention Center, and we're upcoming pursuits include a convention center in Colorado. In Northern California, we have some labs and some healthcare facilities, and upcoming pursuits includes more labs. <laughs> In Pacific, uh, there's a lot of NAFAC work that we're pursuing and also the University of Hawaii. In Western, there's another airport, Tucson Airport. Uh, we're currently there and uh, upcoming pursuits it includes a maintenance facility. So Cal, my home, I told you there's a trend, the airports. We are the number one contractor in aviation in the United States. We are at LAX multiple projects, one of which is the airport police facility and upcoming work includes NAFAC work. So here's a cheat sheet. If you wanna know who your contact is in each of your districts, here it is. It's your manager of supplier diversity. It's your estimators. Stay in touch with us, create your building profile, uh, profile, building connected profile, and stay in touch. That's what we want, and we hope to work with you soon. Now I'll hand it off to James Harper. Everybody, I am broadcasting to you from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, it's about 81 degrees and it's not very humid, so we're doing good with weather. So like Michelle mentioned, uh, we've got some airport projects. I'm specifically focused on the Nashville Airport Project right now in Nashville. So I'm still your gateway to all things else Southeast District. Um, but if you're interested in connecting with any of our estimators or specifically work at the Nashville Airport, please reach out to me. So what we wanted to talk about here are some federal websites that we utilize uh, and why we utilize those websites. We want to share with you why we believe you guys should be using those federal websites as well and then identify uh, some additional resources uh, for you. So what you see here, um, there's some arbitrary heights on these blocks here, but these are some of the market sectors that Hensel Phelps operates in. Uh, you see federal, mission critical, transportation, those are public um, types of projects, and then hospitality and private developer, those are more private jobs. Uh, but the intent here is just to share with you guys that we try to diversify the work that we chase after, especially in, a, in a times like this, COVID-19 or the economic depression of 2008, 2009, you know, you never know what could happen to some of your market sector. So we encourage you guys to diversify just as we do. So some of you all may already be operating in a federal sector. Maybe some of you guys are not. Uh, maybe you're looking into taking a leap to go from local to federal, but we want to share some inf information with you so you can have perspective on how we're using websites and why we think you should use them. So let's look at uh, betasam.gov. So Hensel Phelps uses betasam.gov to post as a prime bidder for federal opportunities. And then we also use this website to find you. If you are certified uh, as a small business with the federal government, 
we can go find you on here. And there's certain ways we can find you, uh, search criteria uh, by your company name, your dunce number, NACE codes, or your zip code. And we'll talk about other ways that we can search for you on a different website. Rosemary will jump into that. Um, but then also, not only are we finding you, but we're verifying what type of small business you are. If we're going to contract with you on one of our projects to get participation, then we need to verify that you are, in fact, a small business, whether you're a woman owned small business, et cetera, et cetera, and then see exactly what you're certified to do. And so it will indicate which NACE codes you are actually small in. So let's take a closer look at that. So if we go to the betasam.gov website, we typed in AAA custom. So if you are already in there, it will get pre-filled out and it'll pop up. If you're not, maybe we're spelling the company name wrong or something like that. But if you're already in there, you're just going to pop up. So once we drill down and we get to this particular contractor, it gives us some basic information. It gives us your address, your DUNS uh, number, your cage code, you know, when did you uh, get certified? When is that expiration? Um, but again, Yes, we can identify you here, but we want to drill down just a little bit further. So you see the red circle there. We want to look at the reps and certs of your company. So this screen will pop up and then we'll download this FAR report. The FAR report, it's it's boring. It's, it's like 30 something pages of hard to read text, but it gives us great information that we need. Uh, some of that is is where we go verify that you are in fact small. So you see here this this contractor, um, they have two NACE codes that they, they have listed here. Uh, and you see there it says size standard. Well, here it doesn't have a dollar sign. It has a number 500. So that is uh, that means it's number of employees. So this this small business does not exceed 500 employees for this NACE code, and therefore they're small. So you have the Y in that column there. Um, a lot of times you'll see the dollar sign, uh, and that is based on average annual revenue. Uh, it used to actually be uh, average revenue over three years, but currently is actually five years. So your your average annual revenue over five years are the limitations on whether or not you are a small business. So again, we're looking at this just to make sure we understand exactly what NACE code you have and that you are in fact small. And so if we're contracting to you for a scope, then we can make sure we, we can get the participation. Another part of that, um, this reps and certs, again, it's kind of boring to look at, it's kind of hard to read sometimes. So we kind of blew this up a little bit just for easy viewing. Uh, but there's a section in there that has some boxes boxes next to the certifications that will tell us whether you are or are not um, a certain certification. So it'll look like this, but this is what we're looking for to verify that you're a small business. So that's how we're using that website. I mentioned that uh, there are other ways that we're searching for you guys. So I'm going to hand it over to Rosemary and let her talk about the dynamic small business search. Thanks, James. I'm so excited to be talking to all of you across the country from sunny Arizona. My name is Rosemary Middleton and I am the coordinator of supplier diversity for the Western District. We work on projects in Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, um, Utah, often shared with the Plains District, and the deserts of Southern California, often shared with SoCal. Um, hopefully you'll register um, on uh, the building connected as Michelle has shown you. But if you have any troubles or questions or need another connection, I'm your liaison for the Western District. So I'll continue speaking about how we use federal websites to find small businesses. And when you are registering as an entity or registering your business, um, betasam.gov, when you identify as a small business, you're putting in information that's going to be pulled into the database of the Small Business Administration and we, we can search for you through their dynamic small business search. And we like this search because um, we can filter in different ways um, and find you kind of dial it in really quickly. So I have an example to show you on, a, on that slide where we are looking for um, electricians in Tennessee. Now there are a lot of other ways we can um, narrow it down, um, but on this particular example, we'll just put in Tennessee and code for electricians, and we come up with a list with 214 electricians. Are we going to call all of those? Our estimator is going to call those all of those? Not before we know that it, you are actually prepared to do the kind of work that we're looking for. So for going after a particular project, probably a commercial project, then we would look through your description on that right 
and make sure you're not only doing residential work or identifying differently or not identifying at all. So pay attention to how you describe your work. James will speak a little bit more about that, um, but we'll filter it down. When we identify a company, we'll click on that and learn a little bit more. Some of the same information that we can find on betasam.gov, but it's really easy for us to find that uh, this particular company is small and disadvantaged. And we also show that they have previously been an aid a um, contractor, so they are familiar with federal projects, and that's interesting to us. We'll probably dig into that a little bit more. Um, we can also find other information also from their size standards of the NAICS codes that, that you're listing. So all this information that you're putting in, we're using it to find you. And with that, I'm going to turn you back over to James to talk about how you can use these same websites to your advantage. Yes, yeah, so we'll talk about how we use these websites, um, but of course we want to share with you our opinion, I guess, of why we think you should be using the websites. Uh, so of course, um, the main thing is that you can register your entity um, on, on, the, on betasam.gov. Um, and then if you are registered, then of course, as we've just shown you, uh, you want to be on there because Hensel Phelps and other GCs across the country can actually find you. Uh, that's the main thing. Um, but then also, of course, you can find uh, additional federal opportunities on that website. Um, and then there may be set asides out there. We see those quite often where there's a project from the from the federal government that is specifically set aside for WOSBs or hub zone contractors. Um, so it is definitely a resource to find opportunities and to be found and to also to register. So on the dynamic small business search, uh, Rosemary kind of went through, you know, exactly how um, that information when you register is pulled to the SBA's deal and we can see all that information. Um, but as she mentioned, we're, you know, 214. Yeah, we may actually, <laughs> there's been times I will call every one of them, but if we need to also verify that you can do the type of work that we're seeking out. And as you mentioned, if you are a residential uh, electrical contractor, then you, you may not be suited for the work that we're looking at. Um, and so, you know, not trying to cut anybody out, but but it is a place for you to market. So with your capabilities narrative, you may not want to get too long winded with that, but it's definitely a way for someone like a Hensel Phelps or any other large GC to briefly see what type of work do you do and it'll just help us out. Uh, then, of course, also um, you can see um, what your competition is like. If you are an electrician in Tennessee, you can look that up and say, wow, there are 213 other electrical contractors out there and you can see uh, what you're up against. Um, but you can take another perspective on that and just look at it as, as other examples. Uh, what are other contractors doing out there in the market? How are they marketing themselves? What services are they offering? Uh, how are they set up? Uh, so it's just good information to have to understand, you know, how are you playing in the market? Um, on betasam.gov, uh, the, the question I have for you guys is, are you a small business? Uh, and if you are, you can go self-certify today. Um, and, I, and I know I'm making it sound kind of simple, and so we'll get into some resources in just a second that can help you with that. But if you are a small business and you have all of your paperwork ready, you can literally go to betasam.gov right now and self-certify and be done. Uh, it's that simple uh, as far as the concept is concerned, but again, um, we'll talk about some resources that could help you with that. Um, there are other certifications that we search for as well. Um, there may be a project where we are required to have hub zone participation or 8A or service disabled veteran owned small businesses. That is not something you can do and just a quick thing if you have all the paperwork. There is an additional uh, application process associated with that. Uh, in fact, you may start at betasam.gov, but you may, in, may end up on SBA's website to fill out that 8A paperwork or to start that hub zone application process. So there are other certifications, but you, you start at betasam.gov just to make it simple. You may get redirected uh, somewhere else though. So on those resources, uh, so again, some of you all may be operating just fine in the federal market, um, but if you're not, maybe you're looking to make the jump from local to federal. So here is a free resource, and I want to emphasize free. This is a free service uh, that's available, offered by the federal government, um, the PTAX. Uh, that stands for Procurement Technical Assistance Center. All of us supply diversity folks at Hensel Phelps, and I'm sure other professionals and other general contractors, the first thing we do when we enter a new market or if we just have a new opportunity in an existing market, we contact a local PTAC right away to say, hey, we've got opportunities, and they help spread the word uh, to the members uh, of their local uh, area. So they can help you with certifications. Um, they are spread across the United States. Uh, they're literally everywhere. And so you can find one near you to help you. So let's let's take a quick look 
and what that looks like. So if you look at the middle of the screen here, which would be the, the top left of the web page, it says select a state. You literally just go in and select your state and it will pop up a list of all the, the PTACs in your state and you can identify the one that's nearest to you, uh, make a connection with them and literally it's a free service and they are there to help you through the process. So we may have made it try to sound simple, which conceptually it is simple to self certify, um, but you may have all kinds of questions about what does it take? What paperwork? What does this mean? What does that mean? And they walk you through all of that. So definitely wanted to identify that resource. Um, I want to also identify other resources and other websites, um, but before I get into that, just want to mention some folks may be familiar with Fez, Fez, FedBizOps. Um, that was just spit off everyone's mouth uh, when I started with Hensel Pels, Fez, FedBizOps, FedBizOps, and a lot of people know about that, um, but that's being merged into betasam.gov, just FYI, and it's going to be known as contract opportunities. So a lot of people may be familiar with FBO.gov, uh, but it's being merged into betasam.gov, so they're trying to make it simpler because um, it's not exactly those websites aren't the exact easiest thing to navigate through. So other resources and again, I know we've talked rather fast, or at least we've tried to through all of this stuff. Um, all of this will be available to you guys It's being recorded. So not only will you get the actual presentation, but you'll have the audio along with it as well. But here's some other websites. You have the SBA's website, the PTAC website. Um, the SBDC is the Small Business Development Centers. They are across the country as well. As well. They're everywhere and, and they're there and it's free service to help you as a small business to identify grants, um, learn about binding, insurance, all kinds of things that are there to help you. Um, so there are others here as well. I won't rattle them all off. Again, um, this will be available to you guys, uh, but just want to make sure we kind of point this out and provide it to you uh, in this deal here. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Mr. David Fisher, and he's going to talk to you guys about staying connected. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Thank you very much, James. Uh, as he mentioned, my name is David Fisher. I am the manager of supply diversity here in our Mid-Atlantic District in Washington, D.C. We are experiencing a very cloudy and rainy 66 degree weather day. So nothing better to have than an indoor virtual presentation for you all. Um, as far as our engagement, uh, I'm pretty much the guy who goes out to all the outreach events. So this virtual engagement is is a little awkward, but it's still as uh, exciting as Brad mentioned before to engage with you all in this virtual capacity. Uh, so we're going to talk to you about how we're going to continue to engage you all moving forward in this virtual world that we're in. As you know, we're going to be using Teams and Teams Live uh, for both our national uh, webinars as well as uh, some of our more project specific outreach events. Uh, you'll be receiving the same type of notifications for those events as you receive for this one with the RSVP link, uh, registration uh, link to gain access to the event. So that's how we'll be uh, engaging you all moving forward. So we're very excited to have that uh, type of connection to you until we're able to meet you all face to face in a more uh, engaging type format. So um, next, relationships. Uh, Hensel Phelps is all about relationships. I think we want to have those relationships. Well, I know we want to have those relationships because we want to understand what your visions are, what your culture is, what your philosophies are. Uh, the more we can understand who you are as a company, the better we can team you up with opportunities to work well with Hensel Phelps. We are a self-performing GC, so we really understand what it feels to make payroll, to do uh, project labor recaps, and to understand what it takes to get deliverables to a site so you can per so you can install that material. So we are builders, similar to you all. We're an employee-owned company, and like Brad mentioned, we definitely have a corporate committed commitment to engaging small business, and that's why we are here today. So communication. Uh, communication is, is very essential to working with Hensel Phelps. We would rather be a proactive team than a reactive team. I think the more that we can open up and have some real uh, honest and clear dialogue with our trade partners, the better those opportunities tend to work out. The quicker we can identify uh, challenges or areas where our trade partners can need uh, a little bit more support, uh, we want to have that engagement with you all. We want to be able to understand uh, where you want to go as a company so we can align those opportunities uh, in that way. So build your capacity to give you that opportunity and build resources within our industry. Uh, accountability. We want to make sure that you hold us accountable because we will be holding you accountable. I don't think that you can have a relationship or a successful team unless you have an accountability partner. 
Hensel Phelps wants to be a, your accountability partner, and we want you to be our accountability partner as well so we can have a great uh, project experience. Uh, meaningful opportunities. I, I think we all understand that uh, we work in a world where there are goals and there are participation requirements on a lot of our projects, specifically federal projects. Uh, we want you to know that we are not a check the box company. We do not want to engage you strictly so that we can have participation on our projects. We understand that the better our relationship can be with you all, the better those outcomes will be moving forward. So that's why we want to meet you very early on. The supplier, di supplier diversity team will be that outlet, will be that bridge to connect you, the trade partner, to us, Hensel Phelps, and the opportunities that we have available to you. So uh, you're going to meet us. You're going to engage with us. We're going to want to know uh, your EMR. We're going to want to know your past performance. We want to know uh, what projects you've worked on and what you want to do with your company moving forward. So that type of commitment, that type of engagement, that is something that we take to heart. That is something that is part of our corporate culture. That is something that we stand by. And that is something that kind of separates us from our competitors is that one on one relationship building philosophy that Hensel Phelps is very much committed to. And your supplier diversity professionals are your uh, your connection to those opportunities. So to expand on that, we'll give you a recap of who your professionals are based on your particular market. Uh, as I stated, I am with the mid Atlantic market which pretty much covers anything from Pennsylvania to North Carolina and West to West Virginia. Uh, the other professionals, uh, you'll be able to go on our website and see those areas of responsibility. But please, please leverage the relationship that you establish with us. Leverage the relationship that you establish with our estimators because the estimators are your gatekeeper. The more you can have a relationship with them, the better uh, access you'll have to understanding where those opportunities are and you can pretty much set yourself up for success in aligning your availability with those opportunities with Hensel Phelps. So with that, I just have a couple of recap items that we can speak to very uh, quickly. Open and honest communication. That is something very important. As I mentioned, uh, engage early and often. I like to tell people to be the squeaky wheel, but not the wobbly shopping cart. What that means is check in maybe every two months or so with your supplier diversity professional or your estimator just to understand if an upcoming opportunity is within your your interest and you can begin to prepare for that opportunity or just to follow up and give us an update to your capacities and your capabilities you might have had a change in your bonding capacity we want to understand that because that will allow us to identify those projects that best suit your corporate vision of how you want to grow and expand your business. Again, be proactive, not reactive. Let's be on top of these items before they turn into forest fires. Uh, let's make sure that we can address them very early and it's OK to say no. Uh, we understand that a lot of opportunities may not be uh, timed perfectly for you, so it's OK to tell us no. Uh, that relationship that we established early on will make that conversation a lot easier to have and we'll be able to follow up with you for other opportunities that might be more in line with the timing that you are in with your particular company or organization. So uh, reach out to us, talk to us, be a relationship builder with us because we're building bridges with Hensel Phelps and we're building bridges with you. So with that, I believe Brad will have a, another recap about everything that took place and we'll be able to move forward to your Q&A session. So with that, I will pass it along.